The concept I want to discuss in this lecture is the concept of steal money. The aim of steal money is to improve your ability to conduct an argument to enable you to actually see what your opponents are talking about, are thinking, uh, and this is part of a process that will allow you to consider your own arguments better and to improve them and to make them stronger and able to stand up to other people's arguments and resist them and in the long run to hopefully make you a, a better rhetorical debater but also to enable you to be able to express points of view that are not your own in a sound and coherent manner. So what is it? That's going to be the first question. What is it? Steel, the term steel money was originally coined by the philosopher philosopher Elidorado okay and the, the whole point of this was actually that he wanted to produce a more constructive dialogue in online discussion so it came about because as many of us would agree there's an awful lot of very unpleasant very difficult very argumentative very abusive even comments that can take place online especially when people are protected by anonymity so what is it that is special then about steel manning well effectively steel manning has gone beyond the position that was being taken up by Ely Dorado in the first place and the name itself comes from the concept that he was trying to replace the concept trying to replace is straw manning straw manning is a very very poor rhetorical approach to argument it is where you decide to misrepresent or oversimplify the arguments of the people you're engaging in, in debate with. Instead of trying to argue with what they are saying, you create a distorted version of it, and then you attack that distorted version. The idea is to make the straw man appear weaker than their opponent's position actually is. It's to make them feel like it's something you can obviously quickly knock down, quickly destroy. That is okay if your rhetorical point is merely to win the argument if you're trying to score points, if you're not really trying to convince the opposition, but you're trying to maybe humiliate them, drive them back, become the winner. And in this way, it can often be part of very poor debating rhetorics, which is about whipping up your own base, getting your own supporters to come on board, to get making people who already grieve you, agree with you more. But it is not a good way to convince other people. Okay, so you can structure an, a flimsy straw man and then you knock it down easily. So the steel man technique is considered to be much more con constructive. Instead of distorting your opponent's arguments, think about what their position is and think about how the strongest and most compelling way it could be made. And then you try and yourself build up the best form of their argument you can do. It requires being charitable. It's often known as the charitable debating approach or the charitable approach. And in some ways you actually start to patch up any weaknesses in their proposition. The benefits of this are simply about persuasion. By showing that you understand the core of their argument that have, you have a, a better chance of persuading the other party. Intellectually honest, it tests your own assumptions and beliefs and you respond to the strongest version of their argument. It's not an easy technique quite often. It can be quite difficult. And it's often quite a situation in which you're having to listen as much as you're having to talk to actually understand what you're engaging with and to understand what points they are making. And that's why it's actually quite important. And that's why it's really, really useful to have as a skill. But what it also does is if you're entering a serious debate, then it means that you are actually going to engage with the, the reality of what they are saying. And it makes your ideas stronger. And it gives you a greater clarity about what their other people's debates are. It, shows, it means that you can show genuine understanding. And we're going to return to that. So we've noted that this is against the concept of straw manning and the idea of concept straw manning thing. But we'll also talk a little bit about the idea of tin manning later on. And to be very important that you avoid tin manning. Tin manning is an, a fake steel man. Obviously tin is quite a weak metal that can be easily broken down. Uh, and we do have the work of some of the work based on the work of McIntyre, Peter McIntyre, also worth looking into online. So... It's a good concept to undertake. Steel manning your position puts you in a better light. It's a, it's a, the idea is that it puts you out from the shadows and makes you responsible and part of a, of a, a, a property from debating your own, where you can actually 
construct your own argument to defeat the strongest opponent's argument in a way that is intellectually honest and cohesive and allows you to express things better. So that is one of the reasons why we are strong believers in it. So where are the applications of this? Well, actually, apart from the application we have here, it's a very strong approach in negotiations. So actually, if you go into negotiations trying to work out what the op opposition wants and what are their strongest arguments, it may be easy for you to find a better way of getting to yes that allows you to find common ground. And therefore you can reach something that's a, a mutually beneficial agreement rather than it's simply just being about winning, rather than about the kind of the... the that, that it's all about winning, but actually it's about trying to find something which you can agree with it. It can be used for presentations, because obviously if you're going to make a presentation, then it's very useful to actually start to think, well, what are my opponents like to say? What questions are likely to come up? What is going to be the really strong questions? If there's weak questions come up, if you're prepared for the strongest ones, you'll find them easier to deal with them. But if you're prepared for the strongest questions and the strongest questions up, it's much easier for you to address these potential objections and counter arguments more effectively, because you've had a chance to think about it. Think about this, if you construct straw man arguments in your own mind, and then people come along and actually make strong arguments against you in public, it's going to be very difficult to defeat them. If you completely steal manning arguments in your own mind, and people come along and make strong arguments against you, you're ready to actually make a coherent, cohesive, and professional approach. And so this can be very useful there for decision making, because it allows you to think about, I want to do this, but what would be the arguments against me doing this? And if you consider these multiple approaches and there's multiple ways of thinking about it in consideration of it then actually that will enable you to make the strongest possible argument for you to actually put it forward so it's very useful and healthy to make good decisions and of course if your work is part of a team strong manning their arguments steel manning their arguments allows other people to put their viewpoint without feeling belittled or dismissed and it means that you're more likely to be able to get for all the ideas you're more likely to evolve avoid groupthink and you like to have a constructive and respectful team culture which is much more likely to be as successful so it's a very very important way and approach of doing things so what is the process well the first pro part of the process is quite simple decide what is the strongest argument and present it in the most accurate way possible even if certain points are difficult to refute engage with them fairly and respectfully by steel manning, you're demonstrating intellectual honesty and willingness to engage with your opposing viewpoints without distortion. This is very important. So how can you apply steel manning? First, reconstruct. Try and think about what your opposition is going to say, what they're likely to argue against you in, and try and think about that in a manner that you can present it to that makes it clear and obvious and logical in your own mind. If then there becomes points about it which seem unclear, clarify them, make sure that you're specific about what they're talking about, refine their argument so you're ready for it, and then you can engage in critical destruction against the strongest argument that the opposition can put forward. Okay? So that's the most important thing that you can actually be able to do that. Uh, that. So you know what the opponent thinks. If you can refute their strongest arguments, you should be able to refute most of their other arguments as well. So that's why it's so important. So whenever you come across another argument, engage in proper discussion, having refined it and clarified it, and remember that by actually engaging in a, a realistic, proper, and do that, you overcome it. It can be difficult. Nobody argues about it. Steel manning can be a difficult process, but if done properly, and if you try and achieve it, then it can help you gain valuable insights. Just a quick aside, the worst thing you can be doing in this situation is what we call tin manning. Tin manning is where you do the exact opposite. It's actually worse, in my opinion, than straw manning. Because in straw manning, you know what you're doing. You're openly setting out to belittle your opponent. And although it's wrong, and although it won't allow you to build up a strong rhetorical argument yourself, at least it, you know in yourself what you're doing. Tim manning is where you pretend you've addressed your opponent's strongest arguments, but actually you've addressed quite weak arguments that your, your opponent's put forward. So you need to actually be able to pull it back and push against that. You need to think about it as you're doing it's rhetorically weak and it is very dishonest. So make sure you actually are selecting good arguments of your opponents that you're placing forward. So why do I argue for steel manning? Well, actually, the first point obviously is quite straightforward. It's a strong rhetorical approach. It's a good skill. If you can learn to steel man, it will help you construct good arguments going forward. It will enable you to win 
property base. It is a good way for you maybe to go along with negotiations over wages, negotiable positions, working as part of teams. It'll enable you to be better at that. So I introduce it here because it is simply a useful skill to have. But I also have a specific need for it because as an uh, as a an academic and I'm setting you tasks, I'm asking you to be able to understand both sides of an argument, but it's an unnatural way to write sometimes in writing an essay in which you simply say, these are all the points on one side of the argument, these are all the points on the other side of the argument, this is my conclusion. Because you won't generally tend to go there completely. You may well do it, uh, you may well do that, but mostly in the, wor in the world, what you'll actually end up doing is being given a position and being told that you have a task to undertake, etc., and trying to argue for it. Under those circumstances, in academic, we can say, well, actually present your proper argument, but by asking you to steal money, we're asking you to present the opposite, opposite, opposite argument as well, but in a manner that is more useful to you. So we're not asking you to do 40% of the essay, one side, 40%. You're asking you to present your best arguments and then spend 20% of the time considering, or 20% of the words, considering what your opponents may want to bring up, what people disagree with you. So that allows you, in academia, to steal money or argument. By steal money or argument, we have to present both points of view in a, in a manner that is more realistic to achieving the aims of what we're trying to do. Okay, well, thank you for watching it. Uh, this, uh, if you have any discussion or any points like that, there are, please join the discussion in the forums or in the comments below this video. Thank you very much.